Welcome, Welcome to, Crossroads. to the Crossroads Church. We're so glad you could join us today. Awesome. Great to have you guys. Uh, just wanted to take a few minutes to uh, welcome anyone who's new visiting our church uh, today, visiting our on online service. So great to have you. Listen, we just wanted to let you know a couple quick announcements before we move on with our service. Um, next Sunday is going to be a special Sunday as it's going to be geared more for the unchurched. So back in April 2020, or sorry, back in January 2020, uh, we asked everyone to, to pick a couple people to be praying for them, uh, praying for loved ones and that. Uh, as we move into 2020, it was part of our series on 2020 Vision. I want to encourage you to afford a link uh, to your loved ones, forward a link to your friends to get in on the service next Sunday, because it's really going to be taking, it's going to be about taking a second look uh, at the gospel message and uh, the, the, the blessings of the gospel. So I want to encourage you uh, to do that. Also, Thursday night, 7 p.m., we're going to have a Zoom partner meeting. So it's open to anyone who wants to come on to the Zoom call. Um, because I just want to take a moment myself, uh, along with our eldership team, would like to just talk a little bit about strategy and where we want to go in this next season. Because up until now, we've been kind of in survival mode, just trying to uh, survive and keep the family close-knit through these videos and through phone calls. But uh, as we move on, we have to realize God's family stays close-knit, but it also expands. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be reaching out and connecting with the unchurched. We also want to reach into our community, mm -hmm. and we want to reach people who, who who need help and support in this time. we got to care for those who need help and support in this time. So I'll be sharing some new ideas and some, some, some different things we're thinking of doing on Thursday night, 7 p.m. So we're just, we're just, what we're going to do is I'll have Melanie just send out a link to the whole church, and you, if you're interested in knowing uh, some of the innovative ideas we have or we're thinking about, or you want to share some of your ideas, mm -hmm. please come on to that call because we're all working together to try to, and 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 some of you have amazing ideas. So we want to we want to discuss how we can move forward as a church. And so yeah, we'd love to hear your heart too, and what God's speaking to you in this season. That's right. So go ahead, Camilla. You may... Yeah, so we're also going to be doing communion, like we usually do in the end of the service with Mark and Neil today, which is going to be great. So if you want to go grab some juice and bread even now already, then you have that and you're ready. And after the service too, we're going to be doing a Zoom lounge, we call it, and with some prayer and fellowship. And you're more than welcome to join us. We would love to have you. So uh, I think there's a link that's being sent out for that. That's right. Yeah. There's a link being sent link. out. And if you don't, if you don't have um, as a church, if we don't have your email, please go to our go to our website and send us your email. We'd love to get you connected into everything, the small groups, uh, the prayer times, everything. We want we want to connect you with uh, what we're doing. It's very mm -hmm. important to us. So we want to bless you, and uh, we're going to go into a time of the announcements. We're going to go into a time of worship, and then we're going to have the word. And uh, we're just excited to have you right. with us. God bless. God bless you. If you're a teenager, join us on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. for our anchored youth group meetings on our Instagram page at the Crossroads Youth. In times of isolation, it's important to still connect. So we invite you to join us in our Zoom Connect groups, and they're on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So get on it! During this season, we're having extra prayer. We're having four prayer meetings a week, so I want to encourage you to get online to one of the prayer meetings. We're having prayer meetings on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. See you there. I'd like to thank everyone who's giving faithfully to At The Crossroads Church. It's such a blessing to be part of a church that loves to give. There are four ways you can give to the church, through our Tithely app, text to give mail, or e-transfer. The best way to donate is through text to give or e-transfer, as there is no administration cost for the church. God bless you as you give unto the Lord. Our children's director, Christine, has done a wonderful job preparing kid videos that your kids can watch at our website under our kids ministry page. Our website is atthecrossroads.ca 
enjoy them. Well, good morning, church. Welcome to worship. Just invite you to join in from wherever you are. Worship isn't about a building or an experience that we have, but it's us declaring the truth of who God is and just expressing our love and our heart for Him. So I just invite you to do that with me for this next little bit.
Oh, you speak a better word. You wipe away all our past. You wipe it away. We can be clean and forgiven. Because of everything you've done. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we just thank you for the cross this morning. We thank you for your blood. Lord, we worship you. We give you praise and honor and glory this morning. In the name of Jesus. Good morning at the Crossroads Church. This is Pastor Travis. I'm here to share the Word of God with you on April 26. And we're just believing God to speak to us in a powerful way today. Let's, let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that your Word has the power to change us, has the power to encourage us, has the power to strengthen us. Father, I ask God that you'd speak to us, empower us and change us today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. I want to start this morning just summarizing what we talked about last week. The title of my message last week was The Assignment. If you haven't had a chance to see it, you can go and watch it. We have a copy of it on our website and on YouTube as well. But last week we spoke about The Assignment. And it was out of the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk was given the assignment, the assignment of going to the watchtower and praying. And we took from that message in Habakkuk and we related it to our lives. And where we are right now during this time. And so I'm going to go over those five points because I think it's crucial and important. So here's the assignment. Right now, as we're in seclusion and we're in our own homes, I think these five things are important. Number one, meet regularly with the Lord in prayer. Habakkuk said, I will climb up to my watchtower. So we have to have a place of prayer, a place where we can actually spend time with the Lord. And we have to have the perspective of a tower because from a tower, we're able to see, uh, we, we can see the landscape of what's ahead of us and also attack that's coming against us. And so God wants us to be watchfully praying in this season from our watchtower. Number two, look for God to speak to you in dreams and vision. Habakkuk says, I will wait to see. So Habakkuk was expecting the Lord to speak to him. And I'm here to say to you now that in this season, if you'll take time to pray, you can expect God to speak to you. God wants to talk to you and he has a plan for your life. And if you'll make time to pray, look and see, God will speak. Number three, when he speaks, okay, Habakkuk says he will surely answer. And so when the Lord speaks, listen to the word of the Lord. This is point number three. Whatever he says, you can do it because he's faithful and he will give you a faithful word. Number four, write your answer plainly. Okay, This is where God's starting to give instruction to Habakkuk. He says, write down the vision, make it plain. Now, here's, it's very important at this time, I believe, that you keep a journal that you write down what God is speaking to you in this hour because God's going to give you strategic plans, strategic strategy for your marriage, for your family, you know, for your career, uh, for outreach and evangelism. God will begin to speak to you in the season. And number five, it will surely come to pass, is what the word of the Lord was to Habakkuk. Wait, number five, wait for God to bring it to pass. Okay? Count it all joy, James says, when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith does what? It produces patience. It will come to pass. Okay, so hold on to the promise that God gives you. So you'd say, Pastor, uh, what am I supposed to be praying about? Maybe that's a question you have. I really believe this is a time of self-reflection. Okay, now when you hear the word self-reflection, you might be thinking, okay, I got to go before God and look for, like, is there sin in my life? Where am I missing it? You know, uh, what's wrong with me? Okay, I'm not talking about that. Okay, God, God is merciful. God is gracious. And if there's sin in your life, you definitely need to go before the Lord and repent. Okay, that, that's a given. But that's not specifically what I'm talking about. I believe it's a season to reflect what we value most in our hearts. 
What do we value most in our hearts? And I'm going to give you two words, and we're going to talk about those two things, okay? The first word here is tangible. The second word is intangible, okay? So th there's two specific things. There's things that are tangible. Things that are tangible are things that you can actually touch, Okay, so your car is tangible, your house is tangible, you know, uh, this computer is tangible, the clothes I'm wearing is tangible. So things that are tangible are possessions that we acquire. And how many know that we need tangible things, right? But we need to understand that tangible things are also temporary things. Tangible things will not last forever. I've, you've heard me say this before. Some of you have heard me say this before. I've never in all my years of ministry seen a U-Haul following a hearse. It just doesn't happen. When you, when you move from this earth to eternity, you can't bring your tangible possessions with you. They're only here for a season to help you live a, a life. But they're only temporary. So if tangible is something that you can touch, intangible is something you cannot touch. Faith is intangible. You can't touch it. But it, but it has substance. All right. Compassion and care is something that's intangible, but you can't touch it. But the thing with things that are intangible, even though you can't physically touch them, you can feel it in your heart. You can understand the things that are intangible and it can be felt in the heart. OK, and, and here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's possible as humans, to be so focused on things that are tangible that our hearts stop feeling the intangibles, all right? And, and here's the thing. In times of prosperity, in times of wealth, and when God's blessing is upon the nation, even in Scripture in Israel, but even today, when God's blessing is upon us and we have all the tangible, we have cars and houses and boats and cottages, and, and, and we have all of these possessions, it's very possible that our heart moves away from the things that are most important, which are the things that are intangible. And I think in this season now that God wants us to, to refocus on what's really important, and that is the things that are intangible. Because the things that are intangible are eternal. The tangible things are temporal, but the things that are intangible are eternal. And we get so focused on the tangible that our heart gets cold and we can't feel the intangible anymore. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18 to 19, it says, Having their understanding darkened, now Paul's speaking about unbelieving, okay, unbelievers. He says, Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. Why? Because of their ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Okay, so, so, so I want you to slow down and think about this. Because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling. So their heart is no longer feeling because of their blindness. Having given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. They got their focus on that which is tangible. And their heart stopped feeling what was most important, the thing that is intangible. And, and this, this is what can happen if, if, we don't, if we don't search our hearts, if we don't self-reflect, okay? There are two things that are competing for your heart at all times, that which is tangible and that which is intangible. And so you have two bank accounts. You have a bank account that, that's being uh, deposited into, and that's the things that are tangible. You're getting, you know, a, a new car. You're getting a new house. You're getting new clothes. You're getting, you know, you're getting stuff. Things that are tangible are being put into that account. But at the same time, we have to make sure that what's being deposited in the other account, the intangibles, is also being filled. All right? Why is this important? Only the intangibles, that which is understood and touched in the heart, okay, Touch, that touches the heart, that the intangibles have value in eternity. There's eternal value in the intangibles. The tangibles, the things we receive, they're temporal, 
to help us in our journey of faith, to help us in our journey of life. It's the blessing of God, but we need to focus on that which is eternal. Jesus talks about this, and we're going to look at that together in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, tangibles, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, the intangibles, where moth or rust cannot destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. All right, now we're going to skip down to verse 31 in Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 to 34. Jesus says, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? So don't worry about tangible things, okay? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. They're going after it. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. And look what he says. But seek first the kingdom of God, which is intangible, and his righteousness, which is intangible, and all these tangible things shall be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Okay? And so here, from this scripture, we see God's way. Say God's way. Okay? God's way is this. He wants us to have ambition. He wants us to go after and seek, okay, for the intangibles. Okay? And this will always make way for the tangibles. As we seek first the kingdom of God, all these things, tangible things, will be added unto us. That's God's way. Now, the world's way would say, you need to have ambition for the tangibles. You, you know, you got you to gotta have the nicest car. You have to have the biggest house. You, you know, you have to have a cottage. And you have to have, you know, the best job. You know, you just have to have, have, have. And it's the tangible things that matter. Okay? And so the world system says you have to have ambition for the tangible even at the expense of that which is intangible. Relationships, good marriage, you know, joy and peace in your life, purpose, destiny, all the things that are intangible but carry with them great, great blessing. And there's a shaking going on. And God wants us as his people to return back to depositing into the right bank account, the bank account of intangibles. Spending time in his presence. Spending time in the word. Loving, showing compassion, caring. All these things that are intangible but carry so much spiritual substance. God wants us to refocus on that in this time. And so we all know what tangible things are, but let's cover a few intangibles. You have a purpose and a calling. God wants you to be fulfilled, and that's something you can be praying about right now, just praying God about the purpose that he has for you. Your purpose isn't just be here to exist. Your purpose is here. God has chosen this day. He's chosen this hour for you to be here. Because you have something, you have a purpose. You have something to give to the earth. You have something to give in this season. Another intangible is your calling as a son or your calling as a daughter. Your inheritance is that you're a co-heir with Christ. Man, God, God has called you to be a co-heir to rule and reign with Christ. He's given you authority. And as we spend time focusing on saying, God, help me to understand that which is the kingdom of God, that which is intangible, great blessing will begin to flow. And out of that, all the tangible things will come. Amen? In Genesis chapter 25, verse 29 to 34, I want to talk about Jacob and Esau. I'm just going to read this passage and we're going to break it up. One day when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau arrived home from the wilderness exhausted and hungry. Esau said to Jacob, I'm starved. Give me some of that red stew. 
All right, Jacob replied, but trade me your rights as a firstborn son. Wow. Give me something that's temporal. It's more important than eternal things. Look, I'm dying of starvation, said Esau. Okay. What good is my birthright to me now? But Jacob said, first you must swear that your birthright is mine. So Esau swore an oath, thereby selling all of his rights as the firstborn to his brother Jacob. And then Jacob gave Esau some bread and lentil stew, and Esau ate the meal, then got up and left. And he showed contempt, the Bible says, for his rights as the firstborn. You know, Esau lusted for the present or the tangible. He said, I don't care what it costs me. I want, I want that which is temporal. I want the tangible in my life. And God said because he lusted after the tangible instead of the intangible, God said that he was a profane person. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Those who sell out on the intangibles, for the tangibles, the Bible says, are godless people. Because they are not looking out for the eternal. The blessings and promises of God begin as intangibles. And that's what they are. The blessings and the promises of God, you can't, you can't touch them. They're intangible. But as you put your faith in them, there's great blessing. That comes Only when we pursue and embrace the intangibles can we make God a tangible reality in our lives and in the lives of those around us. When we put our faith in the intangible, it will produce or deal with the tangible things in our lives. And, and that is so important. And if we're going to grow in our faith, we have to understand this principle. The, the blessings and the promises of God's word, okay, they, they are intangible. But if we, if, we, if we attach our faith to that, it, it can bring transformation and change to our tangible issues of life. I want to show you that in Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 24. So Jesus answered and said to them, now, the disciples were amazed because they, they, they saw that Jesus cursed a fig tree the day before. And they came by and they saw that the fig tree had withered up because he said, you will not bear fruit anymore. And he, he cursed the fig tree and it withered. The disciples were amazed and astounded. And they said, Jesus, like, what is this? And Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. In other words, have faith in the intangible. Okay. You haven't seen God, but if you choose to trust God, look what he says, For assuredly I say to you, whosoever. Are you a whosoever today? I mean, whosoever. I'm a whosoever. Are you a whosoever? Okay. I mean, hey, like, whoever says to the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. So whoever says to their problems, okay, the, 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 the issues that are real that they can feel and touch, Whoever says to the problems, be removed and be cast into the sea, and doesn't doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he or she will have whatever he or she says. All right? We can have whatever we say. Therefore, I say to you, whatsoever things you ask for when you pray, Believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now, faith only comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so that's why in this season, in your watchtower, as you're looking for God to speak to you and he begins to speak and you have your Bible open and God begins to open the word to you, faith is going to come and you'll be able to hold on to that promise and the word that God speaks to you that is really in a sense intangible as you hold on and attach your faith you can speak to mountains and they're going to move not only can you speak to mountains and they're going to move but when you need something and you ask for it believe that you have it and God will bring it if you can't pay your rent just ask for it believe God will bring it he'll do it because whatsoever things you ask for when you pray you believe and you will receive it amen I just wanted to encourage you guys today. I wanted you to be encouraged in your faith. 
I wanted you to be strengthened in your faith. And I want you to know that as you spend time self-reflecting, that God will speak to you and say, God, am I more concerned about those things which are temporal? Or am I also concerned and am I more concerned about the things that are intemporal? Because those are the things that matter. You know, you can have all the money in the world. You have the nicest house and the beautiful car. But if you don't have healthy relationships with people, if you don't have peace with God, if, if you don't have that, there's you don't have anything. Because those other things will pass away. But the intemporal will be stored up in heaven for your eternity. Amen? And so, God, we thank you, Father, right now for every person hearing this message, God. Father, that you're stirring in them right now uh, to begin to um, self-reflect and just say, God, am I really, really, you know, putting too much emphasis on the things that are temporal? God, speak to my heart. I want to have things in proper checks and balances in my life. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing, God, that you're stirring up joy and peace. And you're for me. And if you're for me, who can be against me? I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And so in this season, God wants us to grow in faith. When we come out of this season, I believe that there's going to be a move of God that's going to do the sweep. Uh, and many preachers are already talking, but we believe that there's going to be a fresh move of God. So in this time, as we spend time, you know, focusing on the intangibles, faith is going to come up in our heart. I wanted to just read... Uh, uh, the testimony of John G. Lake um, during the bubonic plague. God used him in a powerful way, and this is, uh, this is just a little, his little testimony about what happened during the bubonic plague. I hope you enjoy this as we close. John G. Lake and the Law of the Spirit of Life, his testimony during the bubonic plague. Now watch the action of the law of life. Faith belongs to the law of life. Faith is the very opposite of fear. Faith has the opposite effect in spirit and soul and body. Faith causes the spirit of man to become confident. It causes the mind of man to become restful and positive. A positive mind repels disease. Consequently, the emanation of the spirit destroys disease germs. And because we were in contact with the spirit of life, I and a little Dutch fellow with me went out and buried many people who had died from the bubonic plague. We went into the homes and carried them out. We dug the graves, we put them in. Sometimes we would put three or four in one grave. We never took the disease. Why? Because of the knowledge of the law of life in Christ Jesus, it protected us. The law was working. Because of the fact that a man, by the action of his will, puts himself purposely in contact with God, Faith takes possession of his heart, and the condition of his nature is changed. Instead of being fearful, he's full of faith. Instead of being absorbent and drawing everything to himself, his spirit repels sickness and disease. The spirit of Christ Jesus flows from the whole being and emanates throughout the hands, the heart, and from every pore of his body. During the great plague that I mentioned, they sent a government ship with supplies and corps of doctors. One of the doctors said to me, What have you been doing to protect yourself? Our corps have this preventative and that which we use to protect ourselves. But we concluded that if a man could stay on the ground as you have and keep ministering to the sick and burying the dead, you must have a secret. What is it? I answered, Brother, the secret is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. I believe that just as long as I keep my soul in contact with the living God so that His Spirit is flowing into my soul and body, that no germ will ever attach itself to me, for the Spirit of God will kill it. And he asked me, Don't you think that you have better use our uh, preventatives? I replied, No, but doctor, I think that you would like to experiment with me. If you will go over to one of those dead bodies and take the foam that comes out of their lungs after death, <laughs> then put it under a microscope, you will see masses of living germs. You will find that they're still alive until a reasonable time after the man's dead. You can fill my hands with them 
and I will keep it under the microscope. And instead of these germs remaining alive, they will die instantly. They tried it and found that it was true. They questioned that. They tried it and found that it was true. They questioned, what is that? I replied, that is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. When a man's spirit and a man's body are filled with the blessed presence of God, it oozes out of every pore of their flesh and it kills the germs. Suppose on the other hand, my soul had been under the law of death and I were in fear and darkness. The very opposite would have been the result. The result would have been that my body would have absorbed the germs and these would have generated disease and I would have died. You who are sick, put yourself in contact with God's law of life. Read his word with the view of enlightening your heart so that you'll be able to look up with more confidence and believe him. Pray that the spirit of God will come into your soul, take possession of your body, and its power will make you well. That is the exercise of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. This is, uh, you know, just a little testimony uh, from a book by John G. Lake entitled Adventures in God. And this was a man uh, during that time of history who walked with God and saw many, many, many miracles because he understood how to pursue the intangibles and how it released the power of God in his life. And so I want to encourage you. I didn't show you that video so that you'll march out of your house and start hugging and touching people. That's not why I showed it to you. I showed it to you so that you will realize that faith is the opposite of fear or fear is the opposite of faith and that you you can actually be in total peace in this season right now for God has not given you a spirit of fear but love power and a sound mind and also wanted to let you know that faith is like a muscle the more you use it the more it will grow amen so be encouraged I want to pray for you and then uh, we're going to go into a time of communion with uh, Neil and Marg, they're going to take us into a time of communion. So, Father, right now, we thank you, Lord, for your people, God. We thank you this week as we pursue you, God, as we spend time with you, Lord, that we'll begin to, again, focus on that which is intangible. And we thank you for the blessings that will come from that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope that message was an encouragement to you. Uh, but before we close off the service and have communion, I, I, I really would like to take a moment uh, for those of you who are listening to this message who would say, I don't know if I was to die, if I would have eternal life. I don't know if, if I was, if, if my life was coming to an end, if I'd go into the presence of God. And I want to, I want to encourage you today, first of all, that God loves you. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever would believe in him should not perish, but will have eternal life. See, Jesus died on the cross in your place for your sins so that you can have eternal life with the father and he he's he's god is so in love with you so i want to encourage you if you don't know the lord mm. that you would surrender your heart to him today yes it's the most important decision that you can ever make and you know what too that the angels rejoice in heaven for one person that gives their heart to the lord that's right so, so they're excited yeah. So Thanks if you sir. want, if yeah, if you want to make that decision, there's a little button and it says raise my hand. If you want to click on that, we'll know that you've made you you've chosen to make this decision. And what I'll have you do right now is just um, I'll lead you in a prayer and they'll pray along with me. We're going to just pray. And it's very simple. I want you to say this. Heavenly Father. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank, thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus. To die for my sins. To die for my sins. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. Come and be the Lord of my life. Come and be the Lord of my life. Send your Holy Spirit to live in me. Send your Holy Spirit to live in me. And change me from the inside out. And change me from the inside out. The Bible says if you call on the name of the Lord, which is Jesus, you will be saved. And I want to just welcome you into the family of God. We're so excited. Yay to have you uh, join the family of God is so awesome. God has amazing plans for you. He has a destiny, a future for you. So just be encouraged. I mean, it's it's going to get better. God's got great things in store. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, so my, my daughter wanted to say something as well here. Um, I want to thank Miss Tracy for the gift that was at our doorstep. Um, Last week, I was showing my uh, offering I had for God. I was saving up in, um, 
chocolate container. The sour cream jar? Yeah, sour cream container. And so she gave me a little bank for my Let's money. Let's a little higher so they can see it. There we are. Cute. Yeah, and it's a little box. That yes. was so nice of Tracy. This, and it came with a little card. Yeah, mm. so thank you, Tracy. That was very nice of you. And, and what are you uh, going to use this for, Sarah? Um, For God's offering, I'll put all the money. And um, when I got it, there was like one or two loonies in it already. Yeah. So. Head start. Maybe your friends want to do the same thing. Maybe they will take a little piggy bank and save up some money for God too. That would be great. Amen. So just quick reminder, next Sunday is an outreach Sunday, so make sure you forward the link to your friends. We'll get the link out to you early. Forward it to people in your contact list. The worst thing that happens is they don't watch it. But I want to encourage you to send it out because as we reach out, we can watch uh, the hand of God move, and it's going to be awesome. So right now, Camilla's going to announce what's next in the service. And we will see you guys um, next week. So what's next? <laughs> Marg and Neil are doing... The communion. Uh -huh. yeah. Is that now? Yes, that's now. Okay. Yes. Too bad I didn't know. <laughs> say it, oh, There you go. So anyway, God bless you guys. And we're doing communion. Yeah. We welcome you here this morning uh, to the communion table. Neil and I are so happy to share the Lord's Supper with you uh, together this morning. We're reading from 1 Corinthians uh, 11 and verse 23, starting at 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remem remembrance of me. So we take um, our bread and we break it, remembrance of the Lord. And um, Father, we thank you, God, for your body broken for us, that by your stripes we are healed. We thank you, uh, Father, that you were in Christ, reconciling the world to yourself. We thank you that you were, um, uh, that you were bruised for our iniquities, Lord, and that by your stripes we are healed. And so we take and eat this bread in remembrance of you and your sacrifice for us. Take heed. And we read in Matthew 26 and 27. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Yes, Jesus, we remember your blood sacrifice mm. on the cross. We remember this cup. We remember your covenant with your blood sacrifice. We know that you said you will never leave us nor forsake us. And, and that was your priestly covenant with your bride-to-be and yourself. And that you love us. And no matter what, you hold on to us and you will complete what you have started. And we thank you for that, Jesus. We thank you for your shed blood, your shed blood, Lord God, which was so precious. The, diff the, the, the sacrifice that you paid is beyond our comprehension. We, we, we think of it in very simple terms, but it is very, very deep and very, very loving what you did. And we thank you for it, Lord God. We know that we have a loving Father in heaven. We know we have a loving uh, husband in heaven as your bride. So we just bless you today and remember the covenant of your blood. Take and drink. Oh, 
Father, we, we bless you today, each and every one of you. We, we uh, pray a blessing over you. We pray that you will come each and every day and spend time with your Lord. That in the, we know in these times of difficulty that he asks us to come and press in and be closer. And we don't know what tomorrow brings, but we know who holds in his hand. And it's because of his body and his blood sacrifice that we can have complete faith that that is what's going to happen. So we ask you and we bless you to come tomorrow, the next day, every day of the week, and spend time with your Lord and your Savior. Press in. Come closer and let's see what God will do in the days ahead. Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to it with excitement mm -hmm. because he is a wonderful mm -hmm. God and he does new things all the time. Mm -hmm. And we're looking for a suddenly to come. So we bless you in Jesus name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Hey, it's time to pray and let <laughs> awesome. We want to encourage you to give in this season because God, you can never give out give blah blah boo 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 snacka snacka. <laughs> okay. So next up is Mark and Neil doing communion. Well we told him sitting down, that's right. So it's been great. It's been great to uh, spend this time with you. And next up is Mark and Neil doing communion. <laughs> <laughs>